Hey, welcome to Comic Toy Reviews. And this is a reply to uh, Devil Toys UK2. Uh, you could check out his channel on the link below. And he brought up an interesting topic. And that was uh, writer Greg Rucka uh, really gave it to the big two companies, DC and Marvel. And is basically saying... Uh, He's done working for both companies and uh, wants to do his own thing. And uh, the topic of this video is really about the behind the scenes uh, things going on in comic books. The stuff that uh, the people who buy comics either in general are not interested in or really don't know much about. Uh, but I find uh, uh, the behind the scenes stuff is always... Uh, Good to read what uh, other creators are saying. And uh, it looks like Greg Rucka is just, uh, I guess the best way to describe it is he's fed up with DC Comics and with Marvel also. And the system in terms of how comic uh, creators are treated now. And this is a whole interesting thing between... Uh, creation or the art of making a comic book, the creative end, and the business end. I know as comic fans, you know, you just want to see some great art and a great story and just some really good comic books for entertainment value and because you're a fan of the material. But also there is the business end, and if the business end is not handled well, in terms of the company, then let's say in theory the company could go out of business or the books will get cancelled because as fun or as good as a comic book may be, it has to sell. It has to make the company money. That is one of the reasons why it's published is because people want to profit. I mean that's just a business model of the way the world works. And that's the way the publishing world works as well, because comic books are published media. Is a company got to turn a profit. And I'm going to talk about, I guess, some of the creative end of comics. And uh, I guess some of Greg Rucka's discontent at the companies. And... Uh, I'm going to try to paraphrase some stuff. And here are some of the words he said. And I'm uh, going to try and quote it here. He said he's reached the end of his work for hire. And that he has spent a lot of his comics career in service of other masters. And he's had enough of that. And the way that big two treat people. Yeah, He said he's given seven years to DC. And his words... They took gross advantage of him. And at least he admits that's partially his fault, but not entirely. In other words of his is that he's seen a gross Hollywoodization of the main two companies. And that before they want to make money telling the best story they could. Now the quality of the work matters less than the books coming out. And that there's far less a desire to see good work be done. In other words, just get the books out. Uh, he also seems uh, angry at DC that basically some of the books that he was working on aren't uh, really held in high regard by upper DC management. And he has a run on The Punisher at Marvel, but when he finishes that, uh, that will be it for him in terms of working for those companies. And he doesn't like the fact that the... Marvel editors are going to take the Punisher character without asking him and put him on the new Thunderbolts team. But he does acknowledge that since Marvel owns the character, they could do what they want with it. But he just didn't like that idea because he's working on the book and he basically wasn't asked. He talks about how a couple of years ago, the two companies were fighting an exclusive war in terms of getting top talent on each side for their company but that's not there anymore and he feels that basically the companies are telling him we don't need you because we could get a million more just like you 
and uh, in his words that for every one who passes an opportunity, let's say it working on a big character, there's probably at least 5,000 hungry writers who would want to take that spot. And finally, he talks about how Warner Brothers and how they finally realized the DC character's movie potential, probably due to the Marvel success the past few years. And they're trying to catch up with Marvel and uh, make a lot of money. And he thinks that the pursuit of a financial windfall of a lot of money is detrimental to the creative and artistic end of the comic book side of things. With all that said, there's quite a few topics here to talk about on the creative end of comic books. And, of course, for him as a writer, he's free to choose. You know, if you don't want to work in the industry, fine. But hopefully he realizes, or maybe he doesn't realize, that to work in comic books today, in today's world, especially for a writer, it really is a gift because... Most people who will either want to write for comics or draw comics will never get that opportunity. In other creative fields, in other media and things, there's a pretty wide pool of talent that if a person applies, they could get in that career. There is a lot of different fields and opportunities depending where a person goes. But in the comic book industry, the reality and the truth is that it is a very small pool. And uh, for most, the vast majority of people who either want to work in the field and maybe even have the talent to work in the field will just never get the opportunity. Not at all. And the only two big players in the comic book field is Marvel Comics and DC Comics. If a person wants to make a living and cut at least a decent paycheck and pay their bills, then they have to work for those two companies. Sure, there could be an independent hit such as Image Comics and working for them, and there, there is a, a chance for that. So a person could succeed outside of Marvel and DC, but for the most part, Especially for new talent, you really can't. At least if a person gets in at Marvel or DC and builds a reputation, then they could take that fan following and make independent work. But if you're not working for those two big companies, or you don't have luck with an image book, anything below that, I'm talking to real independent level, it's got to be really tough to make a living, uh, if at all in terms of paying the bills. I'm not sure how they do that at that very low level creatively, those writers and artists, most who we've probably never even heard of, at least not yet, right, unless they work for a big company. And uh, with that said, the talent pool in comics is really small, and it's not really talent. It seems more like a media of who you know and not how skilled you are. Like if uh, people know people in the industry, that really is what gets the opportunity and gets them in that door. And it is much worse for anyone trying to be a writer than for an artist. I mean, the companies are always looking for artists and for those who got the skill. A person is really skilled at their craft and art, and, you know, really at a high level, then, of course, an editor will hire that person because there's always a demand for art. And art is very easy to judge for an editor. And even they'll tell you that in the comics field, that all you have to do is look at a page or two, and any editor or artist will know if that person got the talent or is at the level to get work, or if they have to develop their skills to get maybe work in the future. I remember even Jim Lee saying that all he has to do is take a look at one page and tell if someone is ready to be hired. And he should know talent, because he is one, right? So for an artist, if they have the ability, it's pretty easy to get uh, work. 
especially if they have a good attitude and can deliver work on time. Those are two other big factors. But for a writer, it's almost impossible, especially for a writer without an artist or a partner to draw the art for the book. But as a writer solo, especially for the big two, forget it. Just forget it. Because they have the Hollywood big shots writing for them. They have the big names writing for them. They also have the ability writers because it's much easier. They could handle two or three books a month. So if a writer has two or three books going, that means other people don't have an opportunity for those titles. And as I said, it's who they know. You know, who they're comfortable with. They know who the writers they want are. And to break into that inner circle to get hired, it's just not going to happen. The only way people now get discovered in terms of being a writer is they have to make their own comic books, self-published, be on the independent scene. And if they get something that gets noticed by the two big companies, then they get offered work. Which is a real... I guess tricky thing if you just realize what I said. If a person wants to make comic books for the big two, they already have to be making comic books at the independent level. Or otherwise they won't get noticed. And if they're not noticed, then they won't get hired. And those big two companies offer the big paychecks. And uh, in regard to Greg Rucka, you could tell he just burned his DC bridge. Uh, it's safe to say he's not going to be allowed back into that company for quite a while, if at all. And probably Marvel is probably not going to want him either uh, with those type of comments. As I said, the field in comic books is very small. They might be two different companies, but believe me, everyone knows each other. They go to the same events. They talk to each other. You know, it's a real small circle the comic book community at the creative end and uh, once you start running your mouth it's gonna get back at you and he is right in terms of being replaceable you know believe me in the comic book field if a person uh, is a pain to deal with or doesn't want to be working there there are dozens of others easily that the big companies can replace them with any writer, any artist, no matter how talented you are, is replaceable. Just like that. Very simple and easy to do. And they won't think twice about letting a person go. I mean, that's real easy. It's not even a question. And he's also right that, you know, when you work for these two big companies, the icons, you got to remember, these are not your characters. Most comic creators actually don't make new characters in comics unfortunately all they do at Marvel and DC is work on established comic book characters that they never built up or really had anything to do with in terms of making these characters famous or who they are they're just spinning new stories with them in it you gotta realize that the writers and artists working for just about all of these characters since they didn't create them that their entire run of creative work, their art, their writing, can easily be forgotten when they're off the book. I mean, you just look at Marvel and DC the past few years. Let's say some creator has a good run, really puts uh, a lot of themselves in their work, tells a great story, a great uh, storyline, some really cool things happen in the book. And then a couple of years later, a new editor is in charge, and they decide to retcon the whole thing, say it never happened. Or the history that a person made is then just wiped away and clearly forgotten, saying, you know what, it didn't happen that way, or it don't matter. It happens all the time in comic books, doesn't it? Uh, these publishers, every couple of years, it seems that the past history of the character is reset, it's forgotten, it's started over again, and what you're basically saying is what you read before really doesn't matter. And maybe at a creative end, I wonder if it gets to a writer, 
or an artist to realize that all the work they devoted to a character just gets swept away like, you know, that was back then and, and it don't matter really anymore in terms of the company. So creatively, their work is, for the most part, disregarded. And while I think uh, working for comics would just be plain awesome, right? Who wouldn't really like to be involved in that creative field, especially in that community, if you had the chance or the opportunity? But you also got to realize at one end that you got to acknowledge that even if you work at the big two companies and you work on their characters, your work could just be eventually disregarded. Because as I mentioned, you didn't create these characters, you're just telling new stories with them in it. And management owns it, not you. And management could decide at the drop of a hat to change directions on a book that you're working on, and you really have no say in it. That's the compromise that creators have to make, whether they like it or not. And I just think, uh, personal opinion, that making your own characters and making your own stories with your own characters is a lot more creatively fulfilling than working on someone else's characters. As fun as it is to work on someone else's characters and those icons, at the end of the day, as a career, you got to realize, while the paycheck will be much better and nicer and more famous, uh... It's really not your work, it's not your characters, you're just filling in for someone else who will take over after you, and you yourself took over for someone else working on these characters. But when you make something, let's say you write a book, or you make your own comic book characters, you make your own uh, storylines with them, that's your creation, that's no one else's. You know, now you're in the prime creator role and you're telling the story and there was nothing before you in terms of making these characters or this book and that now the, the focus has shifted from you just picking up from someone else's stuff to you now being in the center role making stuff and putting it out there and that's far more creative and fulfilling because I think that writing that art Actually, it comes from you more because it is a part of you than it is to just work on someone else's stuff. Now, if you work on your own stuff, the paycheck would be much less. There would be much less of a fan following. And it might not even financially pay well. But thanks to the internet, things are changing. People are gaining their own audiences. And even as just a side hobby or just as f to fulfill a need, just for, I guess, personal satisfaction, that people have got to realize that you can tell your own story. You can make your own characters and you can make your own work. And I think if a person creates from a need to tell a story and, uh, tell their own work, they might be surprised to find that they're actually good at it. And maybe when uh, people are just working on others' characters, they don't realize, they think, oh, they can't make anything good, they can't make any characters or stories on their own that are as creative or as good as working on someone else's stuff. But I would disagree. I think it's much harder to start off making your own characters and stories because there is no source material to look back on to influence you. That when a person has to make something brand new, they have to create it first from within. They have to, I guess, look at themselves and uh, realize that what are they going to do now? But I think that resulting creative end of what's made will be more personal and of better quality than what they work on for another company that could edit, disregard, and just get rid of their work. So I guess I'm saying uh, there's really two choices 
in terms of the creative and the comic books and other media like books is that a person could work for the big two companies and they call the shots and they determine which characters you use and what degree you can or cannot change them and eventually they'll just disregard your run but the paycheck is better and the fame is better and the recognition or a person could make their own stuff paycheck will probably be less but they'll own it and the recognition will probably be less and there'll be less of a fan following but it'll be more personal work and more creatively fulfilling and there'll be no editor calling the shots telling you you can or cannot use this character or which direction that you can or cannot take the character and how you develop them and just maybe that's the the future of comic book creators and the best format is once they work for the big two companies and gain a reputation and gain a following strike out and do their own independent material because they'll take that following with them and if they sell the property for television and movie rights they don't gotta share it with anyone else in terms of the big two management and they'll get a good percent of the profits because they own it. So that's just some of my discussion here about uh, the creative and the comic books and the behind the scenes and what I think is personally more fulfilling uh, in terms of work and uh, just talking about the big companies in the field. So thanks for watching and talk to you later.